right, Chips Engineering here. Want to put a little video together about a rail runner. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions out there and why you set up a rail runner. So the reason why we set up a rail runner is to eliminate the braking force on your Pima Derby car. That is the whole key on building a fast Pima Derby car is finding your brakes. So setting up a rail runner with rear canted axles in the back at a negative cant and a positive cant on the front dominant wheel is the proper way to set up a rail runner. The reason why you have a positive cant on the front dominant wheel is because you see the way that wheel touches the center guide where you have a minimum contact, a pinpoint of braking force on that front dominant wheel. It actually will run the rail. Some people call it riding the rail. At Jukes Engineering, we like calling it rail running because you're gonna run this rail straight down the track. It'll keep your car stable if you got the proper steer in the car. Now, I like to go ahead and talk about what is the number one thing in building a fast Pima Derby car. I always tell people alignment is number one along with weight placement. Why do I say alignment? Because if you have all your wheels aligned properly, where they're not binding on each other or fighting each other, you're gonna have a good rolling car. Now, weight placement is to find and reduce your braking force and give you more potential energy running down the hill to fall further. So alignment, number one, getting the car to roll straight and or steer with the rail runner and then to keep your weight off the center guide, like so, when it's touching the center guide at the front dominant wheel, you're going to reduce your braking force by just touching this one wheel with a light front end, which reduces friction along the center guide and reduces your braking force because there's no brakes there. There's a pinpoint touching the center guide right there, that's it. All right, so weight placement in the back makes a light front end to reduce your braking force running this rail. I'm going to show you a quick video of how this works. Here we have the car. I'm going to run it backwards down the track, which is the weight is gonna be on the front of the car now, and the back's gonna be light. So what we're gonna do, I was going to show you what happens when the weight touches the center guide. I made a mark right there so we drop it at the same time and then I'm going to run it forward and show you. So I'm going to set the car straight, I'm going to put it on the mark and I'm going to let it go. So here we go. Let's see how far she rolls. Wow, that rolled from the mark, one section of track, halfway through, about three and a half feet plus a foot and a half roughly. So that rolled about five feet. So you can see that with the weight touching the center guide with one wheel creates braking force and it will slow the car down. It rolled pretty good, but let's see what happens when I go ahead and flip the car around and let's see how far she rolls with just the front dominant wheel with a positive cant and a light front end with the weight in the back giving the most potential energy on the fall Let's see how far she rolls. Okay, now here's the car. Put it on the mark. I'm gonna center the wheels over the back. And I'm gonna put it right down the mark. Now I'm gonna let her, let her roll and see how far this car will go. Ready? Here we go. It's rolling pretty good. Looks like that went all the way through the finish line. All right, so there you have it. That's how you create a rail runner setup. Now, to create a good rail runner setup, you need to have a good drilling jig. There's a lot on the market that you can pick up and find the one that best works for you. I use the block that we created in 2007 and showed the world how to drill straight axle holes with a canted angle already built into it so you can use straight axles. And then we bend the front dominant axle to adjust your steer of the car. 
I haven't really talked about how much steer to put a car. That's up to the way the car is designed, what wheels you're running, how much wheel gap you have. It's all going to turn on how much steer you need. But for a good rule on thumb, I like to run an eight foot tuning board. A lot of guys preach a four foot tuning board, but I don't think that gives me enough information. I like the eight foot. And uh, so I'll set up a car, if you want to be safe, about 12 inches and seven feet is a good starting point to find out, to just keep your car safe. If you want to adjust it and you've got track time, then you can adjust it from there and fine tune the car and find its fastest speed that way. But generally you're not going to slow your car down if you have a decent low light front end by a little bit more steer. You might, you know, slow it down two or three thousandths, four thousandths of a second. But if you do that wobble, that could cost you three hundredths of a second or more. So I like to be a little bit safe and you can keep your car stable and fast. So hope that works. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned. If you have any more questions, give us a call at jukesengineering.com. Check us out. We're here to help. Thank you.